uh, account. Okay. So hello everyone, welcome to the weekly Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Uh, today we have Mark, Stefan, and myself, Damien. Uh, Tim and Hervé are off today. Let's start with the usual announcement. So the um, ISO notification that the package and the Docker image for the weekly release are available. I assume that as usual, we have the weekly release check to be finished until end of the day. Is that correct, Mark? Yes, um, I saw that I saw that the tag has been applied mm -hmm. and I started the initial looking. I haven't haven't run the checklist yet, but okay. the, the change log is there and I'm preparing the revised change log to correct some flaws in the automatically generated change log. Some release checks to be done. Yes. I'm sure for the Docker image because I triggered the builds on trusted CI to see what the logs looks like related to the IRM issue. So I saw the image being built. Being built. Oh, good, excellent, thank you. So I don't. That's that's very good. Okay. Um, on other announcement, I don't. I have the digital ocean credential exposure. So we published uh, a, uh, an, an issue. So it's public knowledge now. However, I prefer mentioning it as an announcement because last week we said more information to come. Um, so you have details on the issue that I'm adding right now. So um, nothing serious happened. No uh, sensitive information were accessed, but due to a digital ocean uh, technical token uh, that has been stolen or leaked. We are not sure about that part. Uh, some virtual machine had been created uh, 10 days ago. They consume some infrastructure credits for 10 minutes, except one that we kept just for analysis. So they were basically mining Bitcoins or whatever crappy virtual money. Um, we confirm with DigitalOcean and GitHub security teams that no inf sensitive information were tampered or accessed, which is a good thing. Uh, all the analysis of details are on the issue. And if it's missing, don't hesitate to contact us or contact security at Jenkins.io. We have synced and we had a lot of help from Daniel and Vadek. Thanks also, Mark, for helping me and reviewing uh, these elements. Um, the, we have some tasks that has been done or being currently being done to improve the security because we have some gut feeling where the leak could have come from, but we cannot be sure. That's the conclusion. So let's try to improve the security layer by layer and see in the future how it happens. Uh, special huge thanks to, thanks to Hervé, yeah, he's uh, off today because he took on him to call me on a Sunday, he took on his personal time. So really uh, thank you Hervé for that because um, yeah, I understand that calling someone on a Sunday can be a hard decision to make, but he reacted really quickly and we were able to immediately stop the suspicious activity. So thanks for that. Don't hesitate to contact me on the future on that area. That's a call for everyone. No more announcement for me. Is there a announcement for you, folks? Oh, thanks very much for what you did on the on the that. Thanks for and thanks for the ongoing work. No problem. Yeah, that, that's a very fast reaction. Great job. Yes, <laughs> that that's really positive team. Yeah. Ford, so happy happy with that outcome. Um, just to note, we had some a lot of tiny tasks done. Um, we had a lot of ongoing issues, some um, access requests to the virtual to the VPN mainly to different people. Uh, RV because we removed him from everything and we added it, but our future uh, release officer as well. That was opportunity to improve the documentation. Um, we helped uh, we helped a bit Gavin on the plugin site issue. So thanks for your work, Gavin, on that uh, particular application, which 
which is uh, around the plugin.jenkins.io website. It's done that area. So the goal was to improve the automatic uh, update release of the M charts. So each time there is a new Docker image, now it should be picked by update CLI, making Gavin and any contributor autonomous to review it if they can approve the update CLI uh, uh, pull requests. Uh, so they had some initial hiccups on the initial deployment. We had to correct some Kubernetes subjects, ILS check probe, like all Kubernetes applications as usual. Um, what did we have? We had some issues uh, around Jenkins uh, permission, but most of the time it was uh, fixed. Uh, team helped a lot. I haven't tracked all their, their, there were a lot of requests from plugin maintainer that were fixed about uh, archiving some repositories on Jenkins CI. So that's an area which is, the LDesk is used by the LDesk, but most of the time it's not on the area of the infrastructure team. Uh, so thanks for Tim Yacom for helping on that most of the time, or JC. Um, these were the main, oh, sorry, these were the main topic. Uh, we have some work in progress subjects. Main one is the digital Lucent credential exposure. The main consequence is that we have completely disabled by default the GitHub checks uh, from Infra CI, our private instance. So it's another step further more security. We only publish the status. Exception of the Kubernetes management job, which has explicit GitHub check instruction on its pipeline, because we know the content which is exported to GitHub in that case is highly, highly specific. We need it for uh, being efficient on reviewing pull requests. And the sensitive data has been removed. We can still think about disabling it and keeping everything on Blue Ocean. Um, a lot of time was spent on rotating all credentials. So in that area, I haven't tracked everything because it's on a private repository, but I'm working on a run book uh, listing all the credentials to rotate. We have reached the point of half of the credential can be rotated almost automatically. You go to a repository, type some commands that will be documented, and then you only have to copy paste on the encrypted subs file, and then it just work. So uh, thanks uh, on, be, uh, on behalf of the team to Olivier Vernon because he put, he made it available with the work on subs. So that's really efficient. Um, one or two main major elements before I go to the open issue today. First one, upgrade to Kubernetes 1.21. So thanks Stefan for taking care of starting that task. The first part was updating the kubectl command on our environment. The thing is that since we deleted all the digital ocean cluster as a safety measure, we need to create a new one. Uh, the thing is now Kubernetes 1.20 is not supported anymore by DigitalOcean, so we cannot create a 1.20 cluster. So we need the tooling to be able to support 1.21. So ongoing task that should be fixed in one or two days. So expect in the next milestone, the digital cl cluster uh, back. On that area, Mark, did you start, were you able with Hervé to start the blog post for digital ocean have not i still have that that action item i did have a question how's our mm -hmm. how's our expense profile on digital ocean or maybe that's where you were leading with the question yes. on the blog post because uh, I before think, we yeah. ask them for more money we've got to be sure we have a blog post to highlight their exactly so far that, that's the point um we should run out of credit uh, in one month on digital ocean based on the previous month's consumption that's uh, that's what we anticipated. So um, don't uh, don't scream if end of the month when we will reach the end. I'm since it's my credit card, I might go myself and delete the cluster end of month. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Uh, wow. Still, it's better to recreate it because we need it recreated for the sake of the automated process. So I will take care of my credit card and please take care of the efficiency of the builds. But yeah, I need you. If you and or if we don't have time, I can jump uh, to help. But the goal right. is on the, we need a blog post on the upcoming days or week, two weeks at least. 
Yes, and we want blog posts anyway, so that, let me work with Adave on that. Thanks for the reminder. Um, there were some minor exchanges with the Linux Foundation, uh, Jira reaching end of life on October this year. So uh, we have re uh, requested to Linux Foundation if they can update to the next LTS that should be end of life next year. They are they should go, come back to us with a proposed uh, date for the upgrade because we uh, nothing to do on our side except uh, putting a message on status.jenkins.io. The free past upgrades last year were five minutes shutting down issues.jenkins.io. So we have to let the user know and that's okay. Now, there was another Linux Foundation topic that is a new topic. You okay if I bring a new topic here? Yes. So it may need infrastructure team help. The Linux Foundation has asked for permission to send a survey to, Jenk to active Jenkins maintainers about um, specific areas of interest to the Linux Foundation. And as our sort of sponsoring organization, they're the parent of CDF, uh, we're open to consider it, but I've raised the question to the Jenkins Governance Board because I'm not sure what the policy is in terms of with whom, who, who is allowed to know the email address of Jenkins Active Maintainers. Mm -hmm. And so I, it's, a, it's a question for the board. The next board meeting is, I believe actually later this week, or maybe it's early, yes, it's tomorrow. So it's a topic mm -hmm. on the board meeting agenda, but be aware that if the board approves it, I may ask for infra help to identify active maintainers and their email addresses. An active maintainer is a, an arbitrary, dis, arbitrary call. I haven't, don't yet know what criteria I'd even use to decide active or not. Okay. To be decided. So don't hesitate to raise, thanks for sharing, uh, raise the help desk issue one, uh, if we have to do this. Uh, I'm not sure about the um the local uh what's the name of that uh, european laws about the email address and stored somewhere i'm not sure right I'm... and and that's that's a piece that i've thankfully oleg as a member of the board can can help a little bit on that he's had some experience in that area so i i'll look forward to that and we 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 need a decision from the board and then some conversation about, okay, what are we allowed to share? What are we not allowed to share? And et cetera. If required to have the infra team gather it. Okay. Thanks for letting us know, Mark. On the Linux Foundation area as well, uh, around the email hosting. So no answer from Mailgun at all. No answer from KK. I've raised the topic to ask the Linux Foundation to host the mail server for Jenkins.io. Um, they closed the issue, redirecting me to the CDF because they say there should be a PMO. As I understand that to be the project product manager officer, or I'm not sure about the acronym, but we should have a PMO, a person from CDF that should be the person contacting the LF for that request, not us directly. Um, uh. So I've opened an issue on the CDF Foundation uh, repository, but I haven't had an uh, answer, but it was five days ago with an Easter long weekend. So I propose that we wait at least one week before uh, poking someone at the CDF. I'm not sure who our CDF contact will be. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe, I don't know if it's Oleg directly, if we have a PMO associated. Yeah, we'll probably have to ask. I'm used to working with Andrew Grimberg of the Linux Foundation. Uh, he helped us with the transition from, from uh, Jenkins self-hosted Jira to Linux mm -hmm. Foundation hosted Jira. And if you want, I can, I, actually, I can send you his email address. You could start the question mm -hmm. with him because I think he probably is part of their project management office, their PMO. Okay. Now he's not um, yeah. at CDF, he's actually at Linux Foundation, but I think he's the right, he's probably the right person to ask. Okay, so I propose I will ping you uh, in 
let's say I propose eight days uh, timeout. We are at five days. So in three days, if we didn't uh, hear from the CDF, then we try contacting that person directly. Sounds good for you, Mark? Yes. So right now, the issue about email press will be on hold. Uh, and we'll see uh, the next step. Uh, Gavin the, has been poked about that topic. So if it doesn't answer, then we will wait to contact LF and CDF. But sounds like administrative decision on who might do what. Uh, and we'll see on the next step. So let's uh, let's let the CDF decide for the for us on that area. Uh, also contacted Docker. I haven't had any answer around the open source program, but I've been shared the latest contact from someone I know at Docker who is working on the technical part of the open source program. Uh, he told me to contact them and don't hesitate to ask, and what I shared that with them. Um, we described our use cases, the issues we had. Uh, right now, we will continue, Stefan and I, for this iteration, this milestone, to continue working with our accounts, considering it should be a non-open source uh, on that area. We're going to fix the current issue now. And then we'll see based on Docker answer one when we will have one. Um, on that area, I've exchanged with Olivier and he shared with me all the credential and information he had. So Runbook has been written about the policy, how do we manage Docker organization, which one are we using? There is a pull request and that will be part of Stefan and High work to finish the, that pull request on the Runbook. That means adding what Stefan and I already built. So we need to complete the missing information, but it gives the main direction, especially the decision that was made around uh, three seats per organization, which means two owners that are human, the infrastructure officer and its backup, and the technical account. And the technical account is used by us for pulling or pushing. Um, so that has been documented. So if you think, uh, if you have been blocked by that, please review the runbook team. Uh, I need help on that area. I have to drop off, Damien. Yes. I'm going to, I, let's see, I think I need to transition you to host. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that, make host. Okay, you have the hosting now. I'll have yeah. to drop off. Thanks a lot, Mark. See ya. So the rest of the topic won't be long. Uh, we have some issues that I'm going to transition to the new milestone, mainly replacing Blueshun as default URL for CI Jenkins IO. So it's not removing Blueshun, the discussion happened on the issue. Um, the goal is on all the links that you see on each GitHub check, uh, sometimes you have a green icon here, red, for CI Jenkins IO only. These links are generated by your setting on Jenkins instance that creates the link directly when sending the GitHub check back to GitHub. So the request is to change that link to point to the Jenkins classic UI instead of Blueocean, because Blueocean is a dead project. Preparing the, the exit of Blueocean. Okay. Exactly. Uh, there is no Blueocean removal based on the discussion that will break too much use case, but at least it will start a transition. The introduce artifact caching proxy is on hold for now because of the digital ocean consequences. Um, and for the rest, that, these are minor issues to fix. The main one is about the LTS uh, uh, image. The latest LTS published the 6th of April wasn't published for IRM and um, CPUZ. So we have to diagnose and fix that as soon as possible. Uh, one last note about the mile, the new incoming topic uh, before we stop that call. So we're gonna have this one. Um, one information, so we are going to speak about that next week in details, but um, we have the topic of migrating updates to another, uh, Jenkins.io to another cloud, which is, blocked by when first one to sunset the old mirror system. Mm. 
which means that the mirrors dot Jenkins dot IO or Jenkins CI uh, domain name, which are accessed in plain HTTP today, will be um, moved to the actual gets dot Jenkins dot IO. So it and doesn't HTTP remove PKG. And, and no exactly. HTTP anymore. Exactly. HTTPS will be forced. So if you are using these services with HTTP only, you will be forced to use HTTPS. The redirection will be done automatically, but your HTTP client must support that. So a blog post on public communication will be done. We are going to start updating the usages we have on Jenkins CI and Jenkins Infra organization. There have been lists. Anyone having issue with that, please mention uh, uh, on that issue, start now. We're gonna expand the audience uh, in the upcoming days and weeks. And I think that's all uh, for today. See you next week. Bye. Mr. Recording.